We take you back to Berlin and the first Biker Flick Meets Holocaust feature documentary. Sounds like an unlikely mix, perhaps that's why it's the first. And in it, we watch 11 motorbikers on a mission to take the Maccabea torch from Israel to the site of the, of the infamous 1936 Berlin Olympics for the first Jewish Olympic Games on German soil. Now, these characters retrace the heroic journeys of the original 1930s Maccabee riders and discover how they or their families survived the Holocaust. Have a look. Travelling 4,500 kilometres in 22 days, every destination holds a chilling resonance. They were crowded into a school here and waited to board the trains. I went through it. I saw it with my own eyes. I was silent for more than 70 years. For some, it's a chance to learn about the past. I was shocked. I didn't know what happened here. For others, it's a chance to reveal it. My grandmother had nine brothers and sisters. Only one survived. When I see these young Israelis, that's... One of the reasons that it's not going to happen again. They won't let it happen again. And the producer and director of the film, Catherine Lurie, joins me in studio. Catherine, a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Talk us through your motivation for making a film like this. Uh, I think it's because of my abhorrence for ins insidious anti Semitism. And. Uh, Studying history and reading about the Holocaust for many years in my life. I joined the Maccabea movement years ago, an ethos I very much believe in, the changing of Jews from how they were to how they are now, particularly the ones that came to live in Israel. And um, I covered a story about the original bikers for an LA-based TV station for the uh, Maccabea Games in 2013 and rustled up about 50 bikers, went to visit the chairman of Maccabea, and found out that these riders who went in 1930-31 actually saved his parents and his mm. family from the nails of the Nazis. So with that, and a year later, I was at the Maccabi World Congress and I heard that Germany was going to host the Games. And I thought I would capture the moment that we would go back there with a new mission in a new century as different people and fly the Israeli flag and take the torch. Talk us through what that moment was like for you. No, I just thought something to capture, something ironic, iconic, uh, a moment to capture. Okay, but, but what, was it, what was it like, the experience going back with these bikers, retracing those steps and then taking that torch, uh, the way I framed it at least, is taking uh, light back to one of the darkest moments in history? It is. But I think the, the other, the most, I think what makes the film different is that we used modern day predominantly Israelis, who know nothing of anti-Semitism themselves. They don't live in a country where there's anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. So we took them back. Some knew a little of their past. Some knew nothing of their past. Some have been protected because their parents hadn't wanted to burden them, like our chief protagonist there, Yoram and his son Danny. He'd never told his family. He held it inside. And the film was his release to tell his story. So it was a very powerful story. But the love and the bond that they had in this family was amazing. So how was it like? It was a huge impact on everyone. Uh, we were gripped with a mission. I was a new filmmaker. Um, our mission was to take the torch. We had, I had a fantastic team, production team, and a fantastic camera crew who were Israeli. Um, so I think where this film is different is we have the reaction of new Jews against what happened. They can't understand, people can't understand how people went like mm. sheep to the slaughter. Mm. And at the same time, we went through a Europe where, when I went on the recce trip, there were so many communities who were frightened of us coming there and flying the flag. And that says a lot for anti-Semitism today. Right. So that, I think, the film confronts the past, addresses the present, and leaves one thinking about the future. And speaking about that present, in fact, there was a shocking CNN poll that revealed last week that anti-Semitism is very much alive and well in, in Europe. And the memory of the Holocaust is in fact fading, perhaps making the timing of this film even more relevant and important. I think so. It's more and more, it's highly relevant and topical today. 
Talk us through talk us through the message and who you hope who you hope is watching this and what they well, take I think, from it. I think overall, from because we released the film in the United Kingdom about uh, on the 23rd of November nationwide, we had a fantastic response, particularly from non-Jewish audiences. So ultimately, my film is educational for non-Jews. For Jews, it's to see it and think a little. And I think Israelis shouldn't be complacent because we obviously are independent, uh, interdependent on Jews in the diaspora. And the Jews in the diaspora are very dependent on Israel. So it's, I think it's a cautionary tale, a wake-up call. And I think what happened in Pittsburgh, because we've now actually changed the beginning of our film, our film is now dedicated. So we had 11 bikers because you were replicating the the 11 bikers in each journey and we've dedicated our film to the 11 who were killed in Munich and the 11 people in Pittsburgh mm. so the 11 victims just mm. killed in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. so through the screenings in America recently after Pittsburgh I noticed a change in the audience right wow. so I think it's a matter of realizing that we aren't the most loved people you know Whatever ha and, and obviously the people that do care for us and like us, we treasure, but Jews are not a loved race. So we have to adapt to that and we have to protect ourselves at synagogues, at schools, whatever. That's, that's, that's the way it is. And what, what did you learn about that? What do you put that down to, down to? You say the Jews are not the most loved race. Did you learn anything about uh, that mentality in the making of this film? Well, I think history proves it. I mean, we're from Egypt to the Holocaust, I and mean, we're not a loved race. So, uh, but there are obviously people who are, you know, we've got, there are people that like Jews, but it, when, I went to, when I first went to make this film and I saw a producer in England, he said to me, how could you touch a subject like Israel or Jews? The two of mm -hmm. the most unpopular subjects right. in the world. So I believe, which is actually really interesting, is that we, from the press we've had in England now, that we've had some far-left newspapers actually commending our film. So that, I think that is an accomplishment, considering I took Israeli riders to fly the flag. Well, you've certainly taken a, a unique approach to it and given us a different view to start talking about this again. So I appreciate that. And thank you for coming and sharing that with us here. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you very much.